Hey guys, welcome back to another regular dude fishing video. I'm the regular dude John. This is Mr. Steve Douglas, the catfish dude. Uh, I'm sure everybody knows who he is. We are on Watts Bar Lake, the northern part on the Tennessee River. Uh, we're gonna try to see if we can uh, catch a catfish or two since that's kind of what he's known for, you know, so we'll see. Uh, weather conditions are kind of crappy, a lot of wind, but uh, we'll see what we can do. So let's get to fishing. cut shad and cut skipjack. This is a skipjack. We just chunk them up like this and then we get one of our hooks. And we just hook it through the back a little bit like so. Make sure that your barb and your tip doesn't have any scales on it. And since we are going to drift, we just drop them over the side like that to the bottom. I try to keep my line at a little bit of an angle to keep the sinker from going down and the bait to spinning around it on the way down. Let it hit the bottom. Give it a tug or two to slide your sinker down. I reel my rod tip down to the edge of the water. About three cranks and set my rod in the rod holder just the way Steve Douglas taught me to do it on video yeah <laughs> so we're gonna get our other lines out and hopefully we can get some more action yeah the dinky blue Well, I got the skunk off anyway. Let me get the hook out of it. He's a healthy looking little dude. You guys hear him give me what for? He's not real happy. little dude. Oh, let's get him back in the water there. Oh, he's gone. Feisty. He's swimming with it. He's swimming with it.
Tree. In the tree? Yeah. There you go. There you come. There you come. With a net? Yeah, we'll definitely need that probably. We had a fish come along that wanted to take on Mr. Douglas and it looks like he's losing. Sir. Hours. Very nice. Spot. Very nice. That's a fishy spot. Little flatheads, we're taking. Yeah. I don't know, we figure 12, 15. Something like that. Yeah. Nice flatty. Pretty good. Yeah, man. Future line breaker. Release him back in down to the go. Oh, and he's off. <laughs> I don't think he was real happy that you put some steel in his jaw there, Steve. Yeah. <laughs> All right, man. Let's go get some more. We're going to try it. Something that I did want to go over real quick. I had a question um, on my rod holders. We're on Steve's boat, um, but he uses the same rod holders that I do, Monster Rod Holders, since he owns the company. Of course, he uses Monster Rod Holders. Um, but this kind of rod holder is called 3345s, um, but there's actually a third use of it. The 3345 refers to the angle of your rod in the different positions. Like this one here is at a 33 degree angle. You can see it going up in this first position. The second position, you see it, it goes up at a 45 degree angle. Uh, I use this one a lot when we're anchored up or dragging because it really lets the rod load uh, real nice whenever you have a, either a snag or you have a fish strike. The rod really loads good in a 45 degree position. Uh, the 33 and the zeros position is what I use uh, when I'm drifting mainly. Uh, I like a little bit of the... Uh, uh, of an angle when I'm drifting but if it's real windy like it is today most of the time I will set it at the uh, zero position to where the rod is straight out like this that way you're not catching a whole bunch of wind and you don't have a whole bunch of line that's getting a bow in it uh, as the wind is blowing so in order to put it into the zero position all you do instead of putting it up in here between the uh, the rocker you just set it to the side like this and let it come down and this part here will hold the rod versus this part here holding the rod so and it's easy to do and the rod is secure and it is not going to go anywhere so 
there you go dude i hope that helps uh when you was asking me about how to put the rod into zero position on this particular rod holder so i hope i covered that i don't know if you guys will be able to see the white caps or not from the wind but it is very windy today we are trying to anchor up i've got my rods in the uh, zero position of the rod holder trying to keep them out of the wind as much as possible but this kind of wind it just makes it rough all around to do anything but hopefully it'll die down before too long we can get back to uh to fishing we may have to change techniques before too long and maybe start drifting or dragging Yeah, he's on. He's not a giant, but we're taking. Not a bad one. Not a bad one. Over here where I can get a hold of him. Uh, I'll just build Ansem in the boat here. Yep, dude. There we go. He's probably 10 pounds. Maybe. Better get my hand around him. Nice looking blue. We're taking. Yep. Yeah, this guy's not too bad. I'd say he's probably, I don't know, maybe, maybe seven, eight pounds or so. I'll just let him get on back in here. Oh, there he goes. Back down to the bottom. Alrighty. Steve's boat. Is it 22, 24? 24 foot? 24 foot northwestern. Nice ride. The cockpit makes it real nice when it's raining and windy. Alrighty. Well, guys, that's going to do it for this video. We sure did not catch everything that uh, Watts Bar has to offer, but we didn't get skunked, and that's a good thing. We were happy with what we have. It's nice to to take a day and hit the water, and uh, you know, have a little bit of a uh, little bit of fishing time. We've been putting in a lot of hours at the shop lately, uh, and we're going to continue to do that. But we're also going to uh, continue to fish here and there. So uh, we got a few. We'll get more in the next video. So until the next video, we'll catch you next time.